Good morning, uh, my name is Nick Moore and this is my 1966 Ford Mustang convertible. The Mustang was first introduced in April 1964 at the World's Fair. It was a milestone step forwards and it effectively introduced the muscle car era. The first Mustangs had uh, primarily a 260 cubic inch V8 engine which is 4.2 litres and very soon they realised it just didn't have the grunt that was needed so it was increased to 4.7 litres V8 which is a 289. Um, my car actually is running a slightly larger engine which is a 302 cubic inch which is 4.9 litres but having spoken to the second owner of the car who is now 84 years old this engine was there when he bought the car in 1975 and when he sold the car in April 2013, the engine was still there. Ford USA is obviously a very well-known manufacturer of motor cars. Uh, they came out of the Second World War extremely well compared to various other countries. And the teenagers moving from that era to the early 60s were affluent. They wanted to enjoy life and they wanted to enjoy their cars. Ford at the time had a model called the Falcon, which uh, had a sedan and a convertible, but there just wasn't the oomph that the teenagers wanted. So Ford decided to use a similar floor pan for the car, but create a completely new vehicle, hence the Mustang. The beauty of the car was you had endless specifications with tick boxes. You could effectively design your own car before anybody had ever thought of designing your own car. The initial concept was uh, designed by a very talented designer called Lee Ayakoa. He basically threw the rule book out the window and decided that he would design a car from scratch. The beauty of the car is it's elegant, it fits perfectly with the lifestyle of the 1960s. Gone were the big bulbous bodies, the separate headlights, the floorboard, the running boards. You now had a car that was, as we would say these days, fit for purpose. It was an iconic car at the time and it actually won a design award in the early 60s at the World Trade Fair. Nothing like it had been seen before and all the rival manufacturers really thought, now we've got to up our game, and boy did they. This car actually came from Arizona. Initially, it was a very boring dark green metallic called Ivy Green. It had a three-speed manual gearbox. It had a very tired interior and no hood whatsoever. I decided to build or have built the car to my specifications. The colour is an original 1966 colour which is called Aqua. All the additions to the car were available in period. Whilst most of them are reproductions they are extremely good quality and apart from the electronics the car could have all these items fitted to it as I've said previously, by just ticking the right box on the order of the car. I made contact with a guy in this country who spent six months here and six months in Arizona. We had a long chat about what I wanted to achieve with the car and eventually, after some 18 months, which should only have been 14 months, the car came out in almost this condition. I specified what I wanted it was explained what could be done and what couldn't be done. It just struck me it was the ideal opportunity to have the car built to my specification. So the entire drivetrain has been rebuilt, all the suspension, all the steering, the interior is brand new, was well, three years ago, and the engine is superb. It is probably one of the quietest V8s I've ever come across. It actually has a power hood. 
bearing in mind that this was built in February 1966. It has an electronic pump and fluid lines, all had to be rebuilt. Everything that is on the car, apart from the electronics, would have been available in period. The strengthening bars are, because it's a convertible, they do make it a little harsher ride, but it makes it a most enjoyable ride. The valve covers are what they call Endura Shine by a company called Edelbrock. I just think it makes the whole of the underneath of the bonnet really stand out. It's running a four barrel carburetor, which is very exciting, but also very fuel inefficient. There is a brake booster and dual line braking system fitted with disc brakes at the front. The other thing I do like is when you step back, you can actually see the entire engine bay reflected underneath the bonnet or hood as the Americans would call it. I've had the additional driving lights fitted these were originally available on what they term the GT package. I'm not pretending for a moment the car is a GT. I just like them and think they set the front of the vehicle off beautifully. As we walk round the car, there are various elements which are just iconic to the car. The badging on the front says 289, which would indicate a 4.7 litre V8 engine. We then have the Mustang script and the iconic Mustang logo. Moving backwards you will see there is a top tint to the windscreen. I believe this was available in period but it just makes it so much easier to drive the car in beautiful weather like we have today. Coming to the interior I have had it upgraded. It is known as a pony interior. It not only is extremely comfortable and very well put together but the reason for it being called a pony interior is the fact that you have the Mustangs embossed on all four of the chairs. The air conditioning unit as I described previously is a genuine 66 unit coupled to a brand new air conditioning pump. The wood grain on the glove compartment and the instrument panel again was available in period. Obviously it's been replaced but it has been replaced to an extremely high standard. Interestingly enough all the demist and heater switches work they just are a little slow in operation. Looking towards the back of the car you will see the emblems on the indent on the quarter panels. These have got the lengthened strakes on them which indicate 66. If it was a 65 it would have the black part but it wouldn't have the elongated strakes on it. Torque thrust D wheels that were available in period and with the white wall tyres I think they set the car off beautifully. There is a very small lip just here on the outer quarter panel and the inner quarter panel this shows that the quarter panel has never been detached from the vehicle. The exhausts come out through the rear panel, again, which was something that was available on the GT Mustang. Again, I'm not pretending it's a GT, I just think it suits the car beautifully. The lamp lenses are stamped correctly for the year, but the units behind are LED. And would you believe the electronic flasher unit actually makes a clicking sound. This wonderful piece of chrome on the back of the vehicle is in actual fact the fuel filler for the car. And trust me, when you're doing around 14 miles to the gallon, you do need to know where the fuel filler is. To the best of my knowledge, this is an original 1966 fuel filler cap. Another very interesting feature of the car is, bear in mind please that we are talking 1966, 
it has a remote control driver's door mirror. So you can adjust it to exactly how you want to adjust it from inside the car. The other thing I love is the fact how straight the body is. It obviously shows there is no sign of accident damage at any stage to the car. All the chrome work has been replaced, but it is to a very high standard. The immense fun this car gives me is the fact that I speak to an awful lot of people. Some people do know about the cars, some people don't know about the cars, some people don't want to know about the cars. Recently I was at a show and a lady came up saying she knew nothing about cars, she didn't want to know anything about cars, but she loved the twinkly bits that are in the paint. That is the joy of using the car, plus the fact I can thoroughly recommend to anybody owning an iconic piece of American motoring history. Uh, the most important part is it pleases good lady wife no end because it's money in the bank. <laughs>